Okay, everybody, uh, more finding angles. Now, you're not going to see anything different, of course, than in the last video. This is just like the next uh, four problems in the set. Um, and so certainly, if you just need to check the key, you can check the key. Otherwise, let's work out some angles. Um, so just like the last set, I want to start out by identifying the reference angle. That's the, that's the first step, really, in all of this, uh, is identifying the reference angle and then labeling your sides accordingly. And so again, the reference angle I want to find, I'm going to change it to an X or a Y or just something else. I just don't like the question mark. It's a personal thing. Um, let's see what we've been given. We have a 26. That's going to be the adjacent side. Okay, and then we have 45. Oh, come on, change colors, man. Okay. Here we go. Um, that's going to be the hypotenuse side. Okay. Um, so in terms of setting up our work, we have the adjacent hypotenuse to work with. Um, so let's start with like the reference triangle and the actual triangle. We know those are similar, and so we can pull ratios that we know are going to be the same. Um, we have adjacent and hypotenuse, so it's going to be A over H. Since these triangles are similar, um, the one that we see in front of us, the actual triangle and the reference triangle that we're going to pull values from, we know those ratios have to be the same. Okay, A over H by rule, um, in terms of calculating the language, right, um, that's going to be cosine. So we can substitute that side as cosine in reference to the angle X. The adjacent side of our actual triangle in reference to X is 26. And our hypotenuse is 45. All right, so we have our two side lengths, so we don't need the decimalized ratio. We just need to kill cosine. Okay, so if I have a cosine of any angle value, okay, I can get rid of the cosine by applying the inverse cosine. Okay, uh, but of course, I apply it to one side. Have to apply it to the other, and so we got to take the inverse cosine of our side ratio value 26 over 45. Okay, um, by rule, the cosine values cancel, or the cosines, excuse me, cancel, um, leaving us with just the x degrees. And so we find the inverse cosine of 26 divided by 45, the ratio, we should have our angle. So 26 divided by 45 first, and then we take the second cosine, the inverse cosine, and our angle should be about 54.706 degrees. All right, number two, angle first, let's do it. Okay, so that's going to be my reference. Alright, um, I'm going to call it Y this time, getting a little sneaky. Alright, so we have 54, that's going to be our adjacent side. Then we have 51. Okay, 51 is going to be our opposite side. Okay, so we're dealing with adjacent and we're dealing with opposite. That feels like tangent to me, but let's go through the proper steps. Um, so we have opposite over adjacent equals the same ratio for our real triangle. Um, and this is, of course, in reference to angle X, or I'm sorry, angle Y this time. Okay, over A converts to tangent. Okay, so using Y degrees as a reference, our opposite side is going to be 51. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You guys spot my error? Oh, man, I wasn't even paying attention. I just spotted it. That's not adjacent. That's not adjacent. That's not tangent. That's not adjacent. Woo! I almost made a huge mistake. All right. The mistake I made is I mislabeled my sides. Oh, man. 54 is our hypotenuse side. I bet some of you guys are freaking out there. Yes, I made a mistake. That happens. Actually, that's a pretty nice little moment. Like, 
nobody's really perfect at this stuff. That's why we like to write everything out the way we did. Um, Cause I guarantee if I just did that in my head, I would have used tangent and would have been completely wrong on this problem. Um, but I have opposite and I have hypotenuse. O over H, that's actually gonna be sine. So I actually need my sine function. Okay. Um, and so opposite is gonna be five. Hypotenuse is gonna be 54. There we go. 51. Okay, there we go. All right, cool. Um, let's kill the sine function. So let's apply um, the inverse sine. Man. Okay, so let's apply the inverse sine um, to both sides of my equation. So to the sine. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, the sine value, of course, um, of angle y. Uh, but we also have to apply it to the other side of my side ratio, 51 over 54. Okay, um, so by rule, the sine values cancel, okay, and left just with a y degree value. Um, and that will be found by taking the inverse sine of 51 divided by 54. Make that decimal first. Inverse sine gives me an angle of 70.812 degrees, approximately. Okay. Let's keep on rocking. All right, so we have, uh, again, a known value. Okay, I'm gonna call it theta. Remember, theta is just a Greek uh, letter uh, for usually used for an angle. All right, labeling, adjacent. I gotta be really careful not to make another mistake, right? Adjacent and, okay, uh, opposite. Okay, so adjacent opposite, I shall write that as O over A with a matching ratio. That's gonna be a theta. Okay, so on the left, O over A, that's gonna become tangent. tangent of theta, using theta as a reference in my actual triangle, my opposite side is going to be 34, and my adjacent side is going to be 39. Okay. Um, we have both side lengths, and so we really have to find the angle, which means we got to kill off tangent, which sounds very tragic, but that's just the way it is. And so we'll apply, we'll apply using a different color machine, Thank you. Oh, okay. Well, we'll have to deal with it. Um, so inverse tangent of the tangent of theta. Okay, but if we apply it to one side, of course we must apply it to both sides. So the inverse tangent of the side ratio. Now it's working, okay. All right, so by rule, okay, by rule the tangents cancel, leave me just with the angle. And so if I find the inverse tangent of 34 divided by 39, so I'll run the decimal first, and then inverse tangent, uh, I get 41.082 degrees. All right, okay. I'm gonna use theta again, I like theta. Um, so here's one of those examples where I have all three side lengths. Um, and so I just have to pick a couple to work with. It doesn't really matter which ones. Um, I'll be work with the hypotenuse directly across from the right angle. Um, and I'll also work with, let's say adjacent. All right, A, D, J, oh man, A, D, J, there we go. 
All right, so let's set up our ratios. Okay, um, so reference try. Oh man, come on board. We're almost to break. We're so close. Just stick with me a couple more hours here. Okay. So on one side I have my reference triangle information. On the other I have my actual triangle information. Um, let's set some ratios. Um, so I'm using adjacent and hypotenuse. We could have used opposite, but I just chose these first. Um, so I'm going to go A over H of an angle equals A over H of an angle. Um, and so theta is going to be that angle. So A over H becomes cosine. Okay, so if you use theta as a reference, uh, the A value is 33, pulling that right off my triangle. And then the hypotenuse value, the H, um, is going to be 55. Okay, so as been the standard, we have both our side lengths. We just got to get our angles. We have to get rid of cosine. And so to get rid of cosine, we shall apply inverse cosine uh, to my cosine value of theta degrees. Uh, but if I apply it to one side, I have to apply it to the other. So I'll have to find the inverse cosine of 33 divided by 55, okay? Okay, so by rule, cosines cancel. I just have the angle left. So let's find the inverse cosine of 33 divided by 55. Second, cosine. And so I have 53.130 degrees. All right, so second round of solving um, is a repeat of the first round. Um, we still have to find reference angles. We still have to identify sides and get, in, get a ratio. In fact, that's a technical part of this work that makes uh, trig somewhat tricky. I wouldn't say tough, but it is tricky. Um, so in all cases, find the reference angle first. Identify your side lengths. That will tell you what ratio to use. Um, when you get back down to the point where you have the cosine, tangent, or sine of x, that's when you're going to apply the inverse to both sides, killing the function, leaving you just with the angle. Um, I'm sorry, just with the degree value. And on the right, the inverse cosine or the inverse sine or the inverse tangent um, of your ratio shall give you the angle. Okay, Because all you're really doing, it's not magic, all you're really doing is telling your calculator to search its stored values um, for a triangle that has these two side lengths and then tell you the angle it has for it. And really, that doesn't take a lot of data. That's why it's stored in your calculator or your phone or your laptop. It's no secret. It's not magic. It's just searching a list. All right, that's the end of part two. Looks like we have two more problems, or one more page, excuse me, of this type. I'll see you guys in a second.